Our scripture lesson today comes from 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, beginning in the 16th verse. Isn't the cup of blessing that we bless a sharing in the blood of Christ? Isn't the loaf of bread we break a sharing in the body of Christ? Since there is one loaf of bread, we who are many are one body, because we all share in the one loaf. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I think about the world we live in today, I think one descriptive word always seems to come to my mind, and that is division. Everywhere, at every level, and nowadays over everything. And, and now when, well, when we don't agree... When there is division, somewhere we we got the sad idea that the proper way to address our differences is to attack one another or, or to simply sever all relationships with one another. That kind of division goes against the images that the Apostle Paul gives us in his writings to the church in Corinth. He gives us the idea that we are to be the body of Christ. That everyone has a place and and a role in the body. That all are needed and all are necessary. When he really spells that out, he he said that you you have part of the body that is visible and and part of the body that's hidden or, or that are not visible and But you need both of those. You need all of those. And he said that if you're an ear, you can't say that you don't need the nose or you don't need the eyes. They aren't as important as you are because you still need them. They're better with you as well. But the way division works is is sort of like those exercise memes that that are out there that we see every so often on the internet, on social media, with with the person who has this very well-developed body from the waist up, and then these tiny, scrawny legs that you wonder how they're able to function, and the caption is almost always simply, don't forget leg day. I guess Paul says it's worse than that. I guess in Paul's analogy of the body of Christ, he's saying that the upper body can't say that it's amazing and that it's near perfection. And so it just simply doesn't need those legs at all and removes them. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Paul tells us that the Lord's table is a place where the whole body is supposed to come together. Just like Jesus prayed right after he served Holy Communion for the very first time, he prayed to the Father and he prayed that his disciples, us, that his disciples may all be one. One Sunday morning, a a young lady confided in her pastor that that she had invited her whole family, all of her relatives, to dinner at her house. She was so excited about dinner the night before. She had sacrificed all these long hours planning for the meal, shopping for the meal, preparing the meal, really hoping that their, their family could come together and just enjoy this time of being together. But her hopes were smashed. Her hard work was futile because family tensions, petty jealousies, ridiculous bickering, well, it all caused everyone to leave early before she was ever even able to serve the meal. The young lady was just in tears as she told her pastor, it seems that the more we're together, the further we drift apart. Why can't we just enjoy the fact that we are a family? And why can't we just love each other 
even in spite of the differences. The Lord's table is a place of unity and solidarity and oneness. Where, where we're all reminded that we are connected to one another through the sacrificial love of Jesus. This morning, as we prepare our hearts to receive communion, may our prayer truly be to ask God to, to help each of us to put aside our bickering and our pettiness and our, and our anger to stop focusing on on how many ways we can be divided and instead to ask God to help us, to work through us, to bring unity into our world, into our churches, into our family, so that we can be one just as Jesus prayed we would. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, we are at the table. We are reminded of the sacrificial act of Jesus, the love that he showed us when he gave all that he was for us. This morning, we remember that the bread that we share is sharing the body of Christ. We remember that the cup that we share is sharing in the sacrificial blood of Christ that was shed for you and me. And so, holy God, we pray that you'll pour your Holy Spirit on us wherever we may be and on the gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. We pray, O God, that wherever we may be today, that you will be with us and remind us of your love as we share the bread and the cup. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning in our homes, I hope that you have picked up during the week one of the, uh, some of the uh, communion sets. We remember Christ's love for us as we first peel back the top layer to remove the wafer that represents his body broken for us. And then as we peel back the second layer, opening the cup, we remember the love of Christ shown to us in even the shedding of his own blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Holy God, we give you thanks that in these gifts of bread and wine, you remind us of your love for us. May we go out into the world to share your love with others. May we find our place and live fully in the body of Christ, doing what we are called to do, using the gifts that you have given each of us, and help us to always love, support, and encourage all the parts of the body so that we may be one, just as our Lord prayed. In his name we offer this prayer. Amen.